My name is Dr. Hannah Hobson. I'm a lecturer in psychology from the University of Greenwich. They certainly are quite controversial. So I think originally the reason that they caused such a big splash and that people were so excited and talking about them is because when they were originally discovered um, in the animal literature, so they were discovered in macaque monkeys originally, and uh, there were neurophysiologists who were recording from the motor cortex, uh, the, the areas of the brain in charge of motor responding in the macaque. And what they found was that the, when they showed certain videos or images to uh, the animals, uh, cells in the motor cortex became active. Uh, and the reason that was so exciting and bizarre is because it wasn't thought that the cells in that area of the brain had anything to do with perception at all, um, but that they were really only involved when the animal themselves moved. Um, so there was a lot of excitement about what those cells could possibly be doing uh, during those observation tasks, what processes might they be contributing to. Over the last few decades, uh, mirror neurons have been picked up by a number of different fields of psychology to try and explain a variety of different processes and problems. So they've been implicated in language, they've been implicated in autism and empathy. And I think it's really when the mirror neurons started to be used to explain some of those processes that the controversy really started. Because uh, investigators in autism, language and empathy uh, saw some problems with the mirror neuron accounts. And that's led to a number of different debates across all of those fields. One of the theories in, about how mirror neurons might contribute to, might be related in some way to autism, the theory there was that in individuals with autism, is individuals with autism, uh, their mirror neuron systems were less active uh, when observing others. That was the theory. And there was some evidence for this using neuroimaging techniques such as um, EEG, where we put sensors on the head and we can record brain waves, uh, brain activity in the cortex. But uh, recently it's been discovered that those sorts of methods can be quite problematic. So in the original mirror neuron literature, we were recording from monkeys' uh, brains from the cells. Now you very, very rarely get the opportunity to do that kind of method with a human. It's mm -hmm. pretty unethical. Yeah. Um, so we have to rely on these other methods to try and infer mirror neuron activity. I would say at the moment you do see some individual differences. So some people's um, mirror neuron systems appear to be more active than others, but it's not very clear why or whether that's even important. I think now in terms of mirror neurons relation to autism, that theory was definitely uh, been widely discussed maybe about 10 years ago. I would say more recently that theory has started to tail off. There are some problems with that theory. So just one, one example of a problem is uh, the mirror neuron theory would argue that because in people with autism there's a problem with the mirror neuron system, therefore that's why those individuals have problems with skills like imitation. The problem with that account, it's a nice simple account, but the problem with it is actually the imitation problems that people with autism show are much more complicated than just not being able to imitate. Actually, they seem to be able to imitate certain kinds of movements, and some individuals with autism actually over-imitate. So not that they can't imitate, they almost imitate, they imitate too much. Now that doesn't fit very well with this broken mirror neuron theory. Um, in terms of how that relates to learning, actually there's some evidence sort of to the contrary that learning seems to impact upon mirror neuron activity. So one really good paper by Carolyn Katmer, who's based at uh, King's College London and who I've published some papers with, uh, she showed that she was able after a very short period to train um, typical individuals, uh, not autistic adults, um, using a training uh, schedule, she was able to change the activity and responses uh, that they were able to pick up with neuroimaging techniques, uh, which would suggest that uh, it's not so not just that mirror neurons impact learning, but also that learning can impact uh, mirror neuron activity as well.